Hey guys, it's Tilly. I haven't really been filming anything lately because I have been sick so my voice might sound a little bit rough at the moment, but I've had some more books arrive um, that I had pre-ordered plus some that I picked up at the Dimmix YA book club. So I want to talk about some of the new books that I've got and I'm excited to read quite a few of them. So the first one that I've got is the second book in the King of Scars duology and that is Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. The book itself was pretty average compared to some of the other books set in the Grishaverse. However, I absolutely enjoyed going back into the Grishaverse and going back to these characters that give you so many good feelings and I really enjoyed the ending of this book as well especially because it opens up to more possible books in this universe which is really exciting. I also have watched the new Shadow and Bone TV series so it was really exciting to kind of go back to the books after watching the TV series. So I really enjoyed that. I mean the story itself was kind of average. Um, I found that some of it really dragged out and there were parts where the characters I was just like doesn't seem much like them, but I still really, really enjoyed it. And my cat Terry has decided to make an appearance. Come here, at least let them say hi to you. This is my cat Terry, and she's very obsessive. She also has one eye. She had it that way since she was adopted as a kitten. So I'm not too sure what happened to her, but she's 100% uh, adapted and very attention seeking. The next book that I picked up was Threadneedle. Um, this one is by Carrie Thomas. Thanks, Terry. This is the YA Book Club book of the month. I ordinarily probably wouldn't have picked this book up if it wasn't for the book club book. I have tried to start reading this one and I have struggled to get into it. I was probably about one quarter of the way through and I have currently put this book down to read something else that um, interests me more. I'm hoping I can go back to it and read a bit more. It kind of reminds me of the book The Binding, but I didn't enjoy that one either. So I think that might be putting me off a little bit. Essentially in this world, your magic is considered a curse. Um, her auntie's very strict with her and essentially says that magic is bad and that's all she's known her entire life until these other characters come along and she starts to learn that maybe her magic is actually a gift and that things are very different to what they seem. I've mentioned before in some of my other videos that I am trying to step away from some certain like YA books because they're not targeted at me um, as an adult and I don't enjoy them as much as I used to and I think that I struggle with this book a bit because I can't really relate to the character and so I don't really feel any need to kind of be drawn into the story either but as I said I will give it another shot but at the moment there are other books that I'd rather prioritise over it. Uh, the next one I've got is Sarina. This one is by Ellen Alpston. Um, this one is a fiction novel but it is based on a true story and I really really enjoyed this one. I'm currently reading the second one which is the Sarina's Daughter. Um, these covers are also amazing. I really really love them. I really like historical fiction which made me pick these books up and these books aren't for the faint-hearted. It's very brutal and very dark in places um, but it was really really well written. So this book is based in 1699 and it follows a girl called Marta who was sold into labour at the age of 15. It follows her story as she goes through different paths that eventually lead her to becoming the Sirena. Like I said it is very brutal and very dark in some points. Um, a lot of accurate history for women is very very rough um, and this one doesn't shy away from that in the book. Then you also have the Sirena's Daughter which is my current read. This one follows along from the first book um, and proceeds with the Sirena's Daughter. I've been enjoying them both quite a lot. I would probably give them about four, four and a half stars out of five so far. Um, definitely one of my top reads recently. I have found a way to stop the cat from bothering me. I've put an empty box on the floor so if you hear any scratching it's because the cat is sitting inside the box. Next up we have got For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. This one I've heard a lot of good things about. I've also seen it in quite a lot of places so I was really excited to finally get my copy of this one. It is a Red Riding Hood retelling. Um, I haven't read very many retellings lately but I tend to always enjoy them. So this one is the first daughter is born for the throne and the second daughter is born for the wolf. So this follows the second daughter who basically is going to be sacrificed to the wolf. Um, Red in this book also has a power and because of that she also is kind of a little bit happy to go to the wolf and be sacrificed for her town. Um, don't know if I'd feel the same way but props to her. However when she discovers that the wolf is a man things change and she needs to learn to harness her terrible power. I don't really know what to expect from this book but I'm super excited for it. It sounds like it's going to be right on my alley and I'm really hoping that I will get a five star read soon because I have found that all the books I have read recently have either been pretty average 
or just missing something. The next book that I've got is After Story. This book is by Larissa Barrent. So this book follows an indigenous lawyer called Jasmine and she's trying to rekindle her relationship with her mother, Della. So she takes her to England on a tour of literary sites, which sounds really fun. However, there is a darker side to the story that is 25 years before her older sister went missing and is presumed murdered. So as Jasmine immerses herself into the literary world of Jane Austen, the Bronte sisters, Virginia Woolf, her mother is inspired to rediscover the wisdom of her own culture and storytelling. But sometimes the stories that are not told can become too great to bear. I am really intrigued by this one. Um, when they talked about it at the book club, the story sounds like it's going to be really, really good. Um, I'm really hoping that this will be my next read after I finish Sasarian's Daughter. And I'm really looking forward to it. And my final book is The Last Bookshop by Emma Young. This one's really exciting because it's based in Perth, which is my home city. It's also published by Fremantle Press, which is really great. This book follows Kate Cooper, whose best friends is books, which I'm sure a lot of us can relate to, as she opens up her own bookstore called Book Find in the middle of the city. There is also a bit of a love story entangled into this book, um, but Kate has to basically face quite a few problems that her life now revolves around, which is the relationship she has with this mysterious bookshopper, um, her friends, and of course the bookstore being in the middle of a city, which is quite a competitive shop space, I would say. I've worked in a bookstore, which makes me really excited to read this book. I'm hoping it'll be quite relatable in some points. And of course it's about books, which are some of the greatest stories to read. So there you guys have some of my books that I have picked up recently. I still am waiting on a few orders to come through, which I'm very excited about but I will just put them into my next book haul video as I'm sure I will be buying more books. I don't have a TBR for this month so far, um, purely because I haven't really had time to sit down and think about what books I do want to read. The ones that I have been reading I've kind of just picked up without thinking about it and just trusting the covers. So I will be back next month with a TBR and if you guys have any book recommendations for that, please leave comments down below. Thank you guys for watching and hopefully you guys have a lovely bookish day. Bye.